Chinese sellers who don't have to pay any VAT and then suddenly I was out the market. It was yeah. That's what your competitive edge is when you you wasting it crying about being depressed is pathetic, I don't know. There's people who would kill to have my Lamborghini with no wheels on it. Yeah, Shut up, you can't. bitch. Yeah, it's good. So, it all. so right. then kids were dying because they weren't getting fed proper ratio. I always price businesses up in my head. Like, okay, if I'm going to start a business, let's break it down. For 30 days, that means I need to make £100 a day to break even. Welcome back to another episode of The Brown Ups. James. Shiz. How's it going, brother? All good, oh, you? right hand, actually. <laughs> yeah, I'm good, man. It's a good week because the sun is shining. Had a nice breakfast. Finally, summer's back-ish. Yeah, you in the summer colours? Summer stony? Yeah. Um, what were you touching on last EP um, about pricing up a business? Remember we were talking about your bathroom business, right? Saying about if you realised how much it cost, you could really break it down to a manageable... Yeah, so I, I always price businesses up in my head. Like, okay, if I'm going to start a business, let's break it down. Rent's a thousand, staff wages, and then let's just say two thousand, you know, part time hours, whatever you're going to work yourself to keep costs down at the start. So you've got four grand there, or three grand, sorry. So you've got three grand there, and you break that down to 30 days. That means you need to make a hundred pounds a day to break even. That's, is, do you do the same thing in your head as well? Yeah, it's way more bite size. Yeah. It's like we talked about selling to customers that way, but also just working out how much you need to make your nut each day is like a thing to do in it. Like, right, three grand to come up with, hundred pound a day. How much is that an hour? Yeah, I know it's a lot of people don't do that. They try and work out that, well, they won't, they won't work it out. But to me, I'll say 3K is my overhead. T divide that by 30 days because we'll open every single day while we can, while we're early business. Hundred quid a day. That's our turnover. Price of stock. We could price that in quite easily, you know? 100%. That's what I do with, I just measure gross profit. I know exactly how much gross profit it requires to break the company even. And turnover isn't even a thing. I hear all these people say, like, oh, this much turnover, that much turnover. And I get it if you don't know what your GP is. But if you know what your GP is, turnover is just vanity. They say, yeah, turnover, vanity, profit for sanity. And you get all these yeah. companies like, ah, oh, we turn over 20 million. Yeah, but how much money do you make, bro? You're yeah, turnover is a flexing, right? Like, yeah. Turnover a million quid. How much you make? Turnover is like flexing clout, but you can't, it's nothing, is it? Yeah, because if you sold cars, for example, you could hit a couple mil turnover and be making a grand on each car, 500 quid each car. Yeah. It's yeah. easy to do. And like, if you sell like phones, for example, in my business, you get a load of turnover. It doesn't mean nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So going back to that whole thing. So for example, 3K, over, basic overheads, obviously not including bills and all that stuff. But if we just priced it in, let's call it a grand for bills, worst case scenario, four grand. So now I've got turnover, what, like 120 a day to stay, keep the lights on. And then you can break that down to the hours. I'm open 10 hours a day. So I need a customer to come in and spend £12 every hour for, the t uh, for 10 hours a day. And then you think, oh, so I only need 10 customers a day. Is that feasible? Yes or no? Well, even more, isn't it? Because you, you need you need 10 customers where you actually make £12. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and like, it's, a lot of people don't do it that way. Yeah. Well, then them. you could just double that up. Okay, so you'll get two customers an hour. 20 customers a day, cool. I should be in profit. How hard is that to do? Exactly. And then take it from there. Uh, most people don't break it down in like a pragmatic way like that. Yeah. Most people make it overly complicated. Do you know what most people do? And it's so funny. Most people probably put legit years of experience and writing, or sorry, and reading books instead of they would have learned way more about business just setting up and doing an eBay shop than the mindset of a millionaire, the habits of a billionaire. <laughs> The whatever I hate all those books and all those lectures that people buy into so crazy and I can tell you something bro it ain't no habits for these guys there's some deep like deep rooted unhealthy obsession with getting ahead and like even I feel like I've got those things you know like something's happened where you felt like this is how I get ahead in my life because this was against me or this was against me and you realise that the way I can make myself as a man is through this so if you didn't previously have that you're not going to read that mindset into existence unfortunately like people don't just sort of like oh, I want to get rich and it happens there's like something that's in them, you know, like, and I don't think you can just read it and become a hustler. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's a, it's a doing thing, not a reading, writing, like, that is, just do it, just go and do it. Like, this whole podcast is about, like, starting business working for yourself, and most people don't take that first step. A hundred percent. Like, even that, even that thing that I told you about, the breakdown, that takes us two minutes in the head, but some people can't even get around it. Yeah. They'll be like, how will I know I'm going to make money? What if I'm going to go broke? How much do I need to make? I don't know where to start, but my first thing is work out rough cost, divide it by days, divide it by hours. You need this much an hour to keep the lights on and then take it from there. And there's a lot of sanity in that because if you're looking and you think, right, I got to make four grand this month, that's like, whoa, four grand's a lot of money. But broken down, it's like, okay, I only got £100 to make or £120 to make. And if you don't make it yesterday, today's a new day. So it's constantly that refresh. 
Whereas yeah. if you're halfway through the month and you haven't even made a grand of your four, you're like, I'm well against track. I'm not going to make it. And I think you start to just inject negativity into your head. Like the way that you're talking about, fresh start every day. Even it's like everything's history. Today's a new start. And yeah. it's like redemption every single day, which I think if you can come to work with a clear head and you know the mission and the mission's bite size, you've got a way better chance at achieving it. Yeah, it's just, but the main thing is just starting because you might not get the target what you set, but it's working towards it. Yeah. And then before you know it, it's fivefold, tenfold, twentyfold, and then you'll be well in the profit. It's it's funny the whole book thing, isn't it? Because what you're saying there is if you started looking at that and you started looking at every single business that way, you would exponentially learn so fast that like you could even sit in like a hairdresser's and be like, okay, so I reckon that that staff, that staff, that staff, roughly I know what the average cost of those things are. You could start to work out what their cost base is. You could work out how many customers there are an hour and you could start to work out how much it would cost to even open a business like that. Like reading books, you have to remember these people write books for a reason. They're writing books either to feed their ego or because it's a business in itself. These people haven't got the magic ticket. How many people do you know that read Rich Dad, Poor Dad and then came away and just hit the bricks and made a load of money? It doesn't happen. But somehow all these people who preach it like it's the magic pill to make you rich, they still don't have any money. So why? It's just a waste of time to me. Yeah, it's crazy. I always think if you've got to sell books... You don't actually have the money. You're making more money off books and selling courses and this, that, and the other. Like you go to all these like people go to like property investment forums. Um, not sorry, forums. Uh, shows, and I think why is that guy? If he's making so much money flipping property, why is he doing shows? Why is he selling courses? He doesn't. Yeah. Because he doesn't make money from properties. He tried it. Couldn't be bothered. Oh, do you know what? I suck at people in instead. Do you genuinely believe that the guy who's selling the drop shipping course and the how to sell on Amazon course is? a millionaire successful out and out on his own right on the drop shipping as he claims the model and the business is the course it's not the shipping yeah. and then they show all of the stuff that they so say bought with the drop shipping when that could be on loan because that's the model to get you to believe that bs and that's pretty much what yeah. these books are so for example if you really have a secret source to be killing drop shipping right you're killing drop shipping you're making millions a month why are you going to go and sell it to someone else why are you going to sell a secret source to someone else Companies do not sell their secret sauce for pennies on the pound. No, they don't. Why are you going to sell a course for £10 when you're making millions a month to create your own competition? And their make sense. awful sales pitch. And actually, in the last or the, the episode before last, we talked about sales training. Their awful sales training is, I just don't think I should be holding on to this information myself. <laughs> I deserve to share this information. Bro, you're not going to share away money. No one's that generous. You're doing it because you're trying to sucker these idiots in. And I don't say, I say idiots because I've been that idiot before. It's not actually, it's, he's treating us like idiots and we shouldn't buy into it. And yes. the book thing, I'll just say this thing about the book is that it's not that the books are bad. They might have good information in there. But what I'm saying is just because whoever, Elon Musk wrote a book, for example, doesn't mean that you read his book and then you're Elon Musk. You need to find out what works for you. And the thing is, it's almost like a cop out. You know, I, yeah. I read this book. I need this. There's, there's stuff that I don't know that's going to make me successful and that he knows it and I don't. It's just experience. Like, there's high levels. He's obviously like the richest man in the world, but it's all. No one's going to sell you a way to make money. It just doesn't work that way. No. Nah. Not, not overnight. Not from some drop shipping course. Not from some PDF file that you get dropped or a YouTube video. Like, yeah, there's free videos out there, but it's going to be on you to make that money after anyway. Even if the book was good, it's on you. Yeah. Because a lot of people think they need the education. They need to read about business. Like, nah, you need to do it. And you could do stuff yourself. But it's that mindset of, oh, I can't do it, or I need help, this, that, and the other. Like, just go and do something. Yeah. Like, what we were saying last time, like, what's the best way? Like, like you said, just sell something from your house you don't want. For example, I don't know, we're not going to use this mic next week. Go sell it on eBay. Now you know how eBay works. Now you can go and find something else that you sell for more. Exactly. Every single person is asking how to start a business with no money. Well, there's a way to start a business with no money, and you learn. You just clear out your house. Yeah, you just sell out the house. That's it. You can start a business on £100. You can start a business on no money. So there really is no excuse because this right here is a business and we started it with, it's pretty much no money. We bought a few mics, but we could we were doing it without mics initially. So you don't need money. That's another cop-out excuse. But we're telling you, okay, so you're saying that you need money? Fine, clear your house out and learn how much you get back per each item. You're going to learn about business and you're going to get cash. Yeah, you're going to see what eBay takes, how much PayPal charges, how to post stuff if you didn't know previously, advertising, all these things, you know? Yeah. And then you might go on there and look, oh, I sold this mic for this much, but this person got more. Then you have to kind of like retrospectively look like, oh, this person took better pictures. This person had a better write-up, you know? And all those things, like you just constantly learning yourself is the best way to learn. Yeah. And then after that, you might even go buy a mic. Oh, this one's badly advertised. I could buy that, shine it up, put some better pictures up, sell it for more. Do you, do you think there's any 
length in sorry like legs in this drop shipping stuff do you reckon it's real i think definitely some stuff but everything's down to marketing like you could sell anything but it's marketing which is a hard part because you're up against so many people marketing now you know people are spending millions a month on instagram facebook google like what's going to make you stand out i wonder how drop shipping is affecting like the classic people starting out to sell on amazon i wonder if it's made it harder because now you've got a load of people selling cheap selling from china i think Everything goes back to that whole, like, how cultures change now. Everyone wants stuff instant. Like, no one wants to put out the money now to go and buy, like, a thousand units or something and hold on to it and try to sell it. Yeah. Everyone just wants to make a quick middleman drink or whatever. And China, also the way China have done everything, where they post everything to the UK now for, like, pennies. So do you reckon you could start out an Amazon business now where I'm talking that you're actually holding the stock? Yeah, def- obviously you'd be more competitive if you could do that, couldn't you? Because you could charge less. Well, I, I guess what I'm saying, I don't like the idea of dropshipping. Dropshipping exa- existed back in the day when I set mine up. And I never really liked the idea because I've always felt it's not a new age thing, dropshipping, you know. Like everyone had been selling on DHgate from way back when. And they used yeah. to be kind of the listings that you wouldn't go near on eBay. They used to be like slanted writing. I don't know that. The OGs yeah. are going to remember it. It's like yeah. slanted writing. And that would be the ones don't touch. But eBay's now got a bit weird and you don't really know which one's which. Yeah. But if I was going to set up online now, I wouldn't want to do dropshipping. And I'll tell you why, because I view it as kind of like, it's like the sleazy way to get in. And no disrespect to people who are doing drop shipping. I just, I'd rather own the goods, hold the goods. And then I actually, this is the reason I'm different is I'm, even if it's just perception and it doesn't even make sense, I just feel like the idea of drop shipping has been watered out by um, the same people we were talking about just a second ago. I wonder if there's legs and you could make legitimate money through Amazon and buying, branding and selling again now. Or do you reckon that the margins are so hard that you can't even afford to handle the goods? I just feel like Amazon margins are so hard anyway, you know? Yeah. That's why I think a lot of people want to do drop shipping too because you don't have to consider staff or anything. You just, okay, Amazon, t- well, Amazon taking out like 20%, 25? Yeah. I actually don't know. But yeah, yeah it's 20, 20% money. plus. So like that becomes difficult now. So I've got to take off 20%. I've got FBA to get it to the top because you can't even self-dispatch on Amazon really anymore, can you? No. You won't, you, you won't have like high rate listings if you dispatch yourself. That's actually what collapsed my business. My business was making a lot of money on Amazon back in the day. And right in 2013, they weren't really rewarding people for doing FBA. So we handled all of our shipping in-house, which meant that we also charged for shipping and we also made money on the shipping. Yeah. And then when FBA was pushed so hard, we had to put everything to FBA. And then we couldn't obviously charge for shipping. So our price had to incorporate shipping and FBA is more expensive than us selling with raw mail. And then... When FBA came in, you had all these Chinese sellers sending straight to FBA. They obviously don't have to pay VAT. So now not only do I have to give away free postage and pay Amazon who are more expensive, I also am competing against Chinese sellers who don't have to pay any VAT. And then suddenly I was out the market. It was, yeah. it was FBA that destroyed it, man. Yeah, because that's what your competitive edge is. When you start, you buy the stock, so you get it cheaper because it gets posted in one go. Yeah, whatever. You could lower your VAT invoice, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And then on top of that, you're saving money because you're a one-man army. You got no overheads, so now you're making money in the postage. You don't have any labor, so you could charge less, and you're beating drop shipping prices because you're posting it yourself. Yeah, yeah. So all that stuff goes out the window when you have to FBA it. And you know, drop we, shipping too. We're talking about shipping, then, bro. I remember an eBay seller. I don't know if we can say his name. If we can say his name, we'll we'll put it in at the bottom because he was news about it. Maybe we'll put a news article in the link if we're allowed. But it was crazy. I think he was robbing Royal Mail of like 120 thousand pound a month. Not only was right. he charging for shipping. Back in the day, this guy on eBay, one of the biggest, and then he fled. But he was charging for shipping and he was rolling Royal Mail. He had like a little mole working in there and he was putting these like shipment orders through Royal Mail. He would say it was like 100 items when really it was like 10,000. And yeah, crazy. I think he robbed Royal Mail for 3 million quid. What was the trick behind that? Because you put them in a big bag, don't you? And then give them to Royal Mail and they invoice you for the parcels after, right? Yeah, But yeah. they don't really check what's inside there. From my understanding, the way the trick works is you are trusted to tell Royal Mail how many items you're putting in the bag. So if yeah. you lie or miss off a zero and someone in the count is letting it go through, then you're good. And he was getting them on, yeah, hundreds of thousands a month. Mad. Crazy. But it's, I think mail fraud's serious. Yeah. I think they've, I know it is in the USA. I, mail fraud, they destroy yeah, you. Yeah, that word sounds scary. But I think anything which has uh, got the Queen's head on it is quite serious, you know? Like yeah. Her Majesty's Postal Service <laughs> yeah. and the notes and stuff like that. That's serious crime. What they yeah. I thought they were going to put that guy. Um, what's his name? They are going to put him on the fifty pound notes. Is that the, the, the guy that um did the, the lim- limitation theory. Yeah, Enigma. What's his name? I forgot his name. The the gay guy. Yeah, the gay guy. Yeah, who decoded the um. Oh, Turin, Turman. Oh, Alan it, yeah, Turin. Turin. Yeah, Alan Turin. Yeah. What's changed that? Is the Queen's 
face still on the notes or they change the notes in? I don't, I, and they put Prince Charles on there or what? That doesn't. If they put Prince Charles on there, that's going to be good because it means they're probably not going cashless. If they actually go out of their way to make a note with Charles's face on, then I think that my heart will slow down a bit. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, it's going to cost crazy money just to change it over, you know, take out all those notes and put his head on there. It's not even worth it. It's a good sign that we're not being controlled by rats if they start coming out, isn't it? Yeah, because that means more cash in circulation. They did the same thing in Nigeria, though, where they said, oh, just hand back your own notes. We'll give you new ones soon. And then when they printed them out, they didn't print out enough. And then the country just went on its ass overnight. There's barely any cash points in Holland anymore. And even the ones that I go to quite often are out of service. It's actually quite hard to get cash there now, you know? Yeah. I think it's like that over here, too. Like, finding a cash point that works is a bit of a mission now. I'm with Barclays, and every, there used to be Barclays in Cleveland, and Barclays in Nelsey. There, I can't even find one anywhere. None yeah. in Clifton no more. They're gone. Yeah, yeah. All, all of them have closed pretty much now. It's a city centre, that's it. The cage in us up, bruh. It's, it's bad for old people, though, because think about old people. They want to do everything face-to-face. They don't like the internet. They don't like the phone. Call. Well, I hate the phone, too. It's horrible. Yo, man. We want the phone way, to get yeah, orange. You can't get through to them, can we? EE, sorry. Yeah. I'm like a boomer calling them orange. <laughs> yeah. And they close at 8 o'clock, like... You need 24... When your phone is that important for your business and your personal life, you got to have 24-hour access now. Bro, we and were they saying, used to, and now they close at 8. We were saying we're cyborgs now because like when you couldn't have your phone, you didn't have your phone and you're going away, you yeah. feel naked. You're yeah. not even connected to the world. And back in the day, it'd be fine because a phone was just a way of people being... It was, like, it was almost like a luxury. Like, oh, he's got a mobile. I can get hold of him. Yeah, I couldn't log into my email because I couldn't get my 2FA password. I couldn't do anything I on my flight. I did everything manually and it was just... You couldn't even do it, you know? Bro, I was, on a, I was on a boat going to that pig island in Bahamas. I was coming back and I had my phone like this and I caught like a rogue wave. We were going like 60 <laughs> miles an hour back. I caught a rogue wave and the wind took it. And for two weeks, it took my SIM card on my phone so I couldn't get any replacement while I was there. I think it was like I had another week left actually. It wasn't two weeks, like a week left. For a week, I didn't even know if I knew my fucking passwords to get back into my crypto. Yeah. And I had a load of Bitcoin and I thought, ah. And that was like that. You don't just lose. The point I'm making is you don't just lose contact. I lost like my savings. I'm like, yeah. ah, I don't know if I can get in. I didn't because I make my password so good now because I got hacked one time that even I might not remember it. You know? <laughs> yeah, when your password's that good, you don't remember it yourself. Yeah, <laughs> that's a mad part though because that's like the fifty-fifty problem now is that you got your crypto with your own wallet, you're in charge of it, hundred percent your responsibility. But if you lose it, you lose it, and then you got the other side where you got your money in your bank, it's insured, it's protected. Someone steals it from you to a degree, you're protected. If the currency goes down or the bank goes down, you're protected. But some oversight come in take your money thank you see you later that's it well you, with crypto they can't do that but you could lose it you know from forgetting your words your phone your wallet your device whatever so like, what's better you know and it looks like we're even losing the second one now right yeah pretty much yeah it seems that way what was it you were saying about the other day there's some um, legislation that's coming in is it legislation or is it just some backup from the company what was that about? When they're storing the details from an independent company now for your crypto wallets where you have your 12 word catchphrase Oh, yeah, yeah, they're trying to ban the self-custody wallets in Europe, yeah. And how would that work then? Oh, so basically before you got the ledger, the USB stick you put in, so you could put all your crypto in there and it's safe. Yeah. But now they release an update saying that um, when you update your thing, we're going to send your special keys to different companies so you could request them if you ever forget them. But that's the whole point, like, because now that company could get hacked, so you get your crypto stolen. The government know who owns what when you try to claim your thing back because it's supposed to be self-custody. No one should know what you got but you, you know? And the so issue, it takes the sovereignty away completely when you do that. And it makes it part and parcel of the CBDC. Because yeah. if they know exactly who's got it, where the money's going, where it moves to where, it brings you back to the same issue, you know? Yeah, you've got a real phobia of a CBDC, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, I do, yeah. Every EP is CBDC, CBDC. I just think that... I think we'll be looking back and this will be the turning point of when we fully relinquish any freedom. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, you already see that in other countries. Yeah, it's not good. And then the problem is, if we see it in other countries already... And once all the countries are doing it, it then gives you the option to be the full t- tyrannical, you know? As long as other countries aren't fully in there, we're not getting the worst of what it is. Yeah. What happened anyway is the people who don't want that stuff will just move to countries where they don't have it, you know? But they have a problem like China. You know, if you jaywalk, as in cross without a zebra crossing, there's so many facial recognition cameras. They take a picture of you and deduct it from your account straight away, like within minutes. Yeah, through the WeChat, WeChat or WePay yeah. or whatever. So it'll come out of your bank without your consent. So how does it work? WeChat has been the CB- the the wallet for CBDC over there. Is that right? It's basically WhatsApp with your wallet tied to it, your social credit score and everything else. So for example, now you're talking shit about CBDCs and I'm not. And I hang out with you. Now my social score goes down. 
Yeah. And then I cross the road illegally. Money comes out of my account. Like, this control is crazy. All right, we have to be in agreement, right? If that ever comes in over here, that we'll just let ourselves go broke and still chat the true break of this podcast. Yeah, for sure. We we'll suddenly start saying, hey, CBDC is fantastic. Yeah, let's take let's take government uh, shills. Let's yeah. become government shills. CBDC go. Have you seen that video of Biden walking away with those kids? Man, that's so creepy. It's mad, isn't weirdo. it? What's going on over there, man? Like you said, he looks like he's done it before. Like the way he grabbed the hands. Come on, kids. And I noticed he only held the hand of the girl and he didn't get... You said he didn't go into the staff room, did he? Yeah, so where the other staff members were and they're like coming or whatever, he's gone to the other room, like the choir room. And so he weird. looks like some weird guy taking them off to a ritual killing, doesn't he? He looks like kind of devoid of anything, just walking off like a ghost. Yeah. Fucking why do weird, you, Why would you take kids away from their parents too? Like, it's weird. And you said about the parents, like, that's what... Simping I Simping for authoritarianism. That's it. So stupid. Like, give your kids. It's the kind He's... of things people do to, like, when uh, you had, like, world leaders who'd be like, I'm God on earth, like King Jong-il or whatever, like, back in the day. Like, rulers and emperors, like, I'm God. And people would be like, take my kids, please. Or take whatever you want, take my family. And you're like, so dumb. Imagine being that guy. You look up to these people like they're better than you. It's just looking up to anyone in general is a real bad thing. You should look up to people in terms of like, there's people in different realms of life where you're like, yeah, that person's really good at this. I'm going to look at them and understand more about that. But to look up to someone like they have all the answers that you don't. But, it's kind but of the mad. mad part was giving your kids to Joe Biden, right? You already know he's weird. There's loads of videos and compilations of him sniffing kids. Like, it's not normal. And then you go give your kids to him. Like, people were doing that to Jimmy Savile back in the day and then only finding out 20 years later, like, they literally handed a child over to get molested. It's mad. Mad, man. Crazy, isn't it? Some crazy We should attach stuff. that video to this so that people get how weird it is. It's so weird. <laughs> yeah, we will. And there's that compilation of him sniffing kids too. Like, so off-key. Okay, bro. The world is run by a lot of pedophiles and wrong-uns. Yeah, it's mad. And it's crazy because now people are starting to believe it. Before, people didn't used to believe it. I remember when, like, I'd get into arguments with people and I used to say it, you know? Yeah, yeah. I didn't believe it. And now it. everyone believes it. It's crazy. It's and a like, good sign, though. It's a good sign. And like, we've all woken up in areas, you know, like, I think the general populace all believe Biden was a better option than Trump. And now I run a poll on my Instagram the other day. I think that it was like 95% oh, yeah. Trump to 5% Biden. I think unanimously now everyone understands that Biden is a very bad man for the Probably world. And worse, I think that if you went back four or five years, everyone would say, no way, Trump, 100% Biden. I think like, mad, all of what we think. And that's why you can never be too judgmental on what people's opinions are, because yeah. because everything has changed every like crack that we didn't think there has been shown and every person we thought bad we start to see actually now nah, they're pretty good and like crazy everything's a fugazi yeah it's mad it's, it's cool that how everyone's woken up to all these things because it before it was like oh you're crazy you're a conspiracy theorist now everyone's like oh yeah yeah this it's not even a conspiracy i said to my friend at work actually that back in the day we used to get in like heated debates yeah over um he's a lot more left than i am i would say i was center but like it can sound quite, I got quite strong views and he's a lot more left and we used to get an, he debates over stuff. And now we just like, we want to bring back the days where we can debate over that because at the moment, the common enemy is just corruption. It's not even like, ah, I think that it should be this for this agenda or this. It's just like, bro, we need these rats who want to take us to World War Three out of power. This is crazy. Yeah, did you see that thing about Trump saying that every single person in the White House must be brought down to restore this republic? It's crazy. Like, this place has to be burned from the ground to the ground. He's right as well. It's yeah. such a corrupt organization. Yeah, it's mad. He's saying he's going to release all the JFK stuff if he gets in, isn't he? Oh, mad. He I hope he does get in. Up. He'll be sick. He will be sick. Because yeah, I think now really he's got killed. a bone to chew. He wants to prove just how corrupt everything was. So I reckon we will, like, we think we're woke now. I think we'll understand, hopefully, if he gets in and he's able to, un like, release a lot of this redacted stuff, we're going to see more truth than we've ever known. Yeah. They what must have some do? mad files in there in that place, like UFOs, JFK, all these people. Who's the other guy? Ted Bundy. Yeah. What do you reckon it would do, bro? If you released all that JFK stuff and we found out it was CIA, but America was being led by a good man, do you reckon it would cause chaos or people would just be like, no. right, it was corruption? I think, I think people are pretty docile, you know? Yeah. Like history repeats itself and only like 2% of people are critical thinkers, you know? And they said, even if we keep saying like, oh, Hitler wouldn't happen these days, like it would happen. Yeah, it's pretty easy because most people do not contribute anything. They just go with the flow. As long as it's not me, I'm fine. And even people being led away to concentration camps, they'll just be like, I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure it's fine. The government told me it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. People don't critically think about stuff. They just go with the flow because it's easier, you know? 
Like even now, if you think about it, even us, right? We know what's going to happen with CBDCs, but like, are we taking enough steps to protect ourselves? Do we have enough physical gold, physical silver, physical platinum? Like all these things. Are we? In, do we have cash? Okay, so you need to protect yourself now against government tyranny. What are you going to do in terms of like storing money? What measures are you taking? Everything from the ground up. Well, first thing, I guess, money gets you out of any situation, but is money going to be worth anything in, in, in five years, 10 years, like actual money in your bank? Or is it going to be like, oh, you can only do this with it because, you know, you can't yeah. move out of this country, you can't do this, you can't do that. So I guess having like physical gold, physical silver, maybe platinum, like silver and platinum are like more more in use, so they're, they're better, but yeah. And cash, even cash, like in some countries like Nigeria now, people are paying a 20% premium for cash. So if I gave you 1,200 quid, you give me a grand in cash. Mad. Because people need it. How mad is that? That's crazy. And even in 2000, I don't know the stats now, but in 2008, we only had 2% of cash circulating of, of all the total wealth in the UK. So that's that's how rare cash is. And it must be even less than that now. So right now, what, back in what date was that? 2008, 2%? when there was plenty of ATMs about, you know? Oh, now, what do you reckon it is now? And point like, two? Half, yeah, point two probably, half a percent in cash. So if everything goes down, like they keep talking about a cyber hack. Have you seen that? Klaus Schwab and the WF talking about cyber hacks. Like, we have to be prepared for a cyber attack. And before that, it was we have to be prepared for a pandemic. Like, they kept saying the pandemic thing for pandemic. years. Pandemic. Yeah, the pandemic. We have to be prepared for our cyber attack against ourselves, against you. <laughs> yeah. So imagine that all our phones stop working or our banks stop working. The banks would be the worst one. Then they'd be like, oh, don't worry, we've got this crypto-based thing, CBDC. You could use this instead. Here you go. Here's your wallet with your money in it. Bruh, it's going to be a mad time. You know what? Like I, I say about it, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. Nothing really worries me. I just think, it, but if things can be prevented, we should and have a duty yeah. to prevent it. You know, but like the way I see it, and like not being just being realistic, is whatever has happened. The same as you as well. Whatever shitty situations have, we always capitalize on it. I think as yeah. far as people who will be okay during a situation where the government start to act even more ratty than they've acted, I think I don't have anything to worry about. Nor do you. Yeah, I think that. The fact that we're worried about it, people who literally have struggled to get ahead during the times that we've been in, you should be really be worried about it. And you should also be the people who aren't saying yes to this BS. You shouldn't be saying like, oh, it's good to be in a cashless society. Like, is it though? Why is it good to have less power? Yeah. And I think people should go out to cash point. So take your cash out, spend local, spend cash. Because if I give 20 quid to a barber, then he goes and buys breakfast with it. It's still 20 quid, then 20 quid. But if you pay, pay with card, well, they're going to lose 50p on it. Then the bakery loses 50p on it. You know, like it's just getting, it's going all back to the bank. It's trickling back. And it's all steps towards like, well, you don't need cash anyway, because when do you ever use it? So if we as consumers bring cash back into the businesses, we're putting cash back into the system. And therefore that negates some of the argument of, well, we don't use cash anyway. Yeah. If you don't use cash, the business don't take cash. And the people who are just NPCs, the people who don't critically think, they start to think, well, well, I don't use cash anyway. It's just convenient. Yeah, but it's convenient until there is no cash and then they can dictate what you buy because of agenda, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing is convenience. The reason we've got here in the first place is convenience. Like everyone wants to not carry their card around. They want to use Apple Pay, you know? Conven I want to tap. I want to be touched. You know, the tap thing now. And I'm as bad for it. I spend a lot of money. My business spends a lot of money on Amazon. Not, I don't spend any money personally on Amazon, actually. But I'm as bad for it. So I talk about hating the fact that there's no real independence these days. Is Amazon has been so convenient that it's hard to be an independent now because yeah. of Amazon. So convenience has made us piss on so much opportunity. Could you imagine a world where independence still prevailed the same way they did? Like everyone can get ahead. Everyone can make money. You can have people who just have a small business that serves, say, 100 members of the community and they have a business that survives. Now you're either corporate monster or you're pretty much dead trying to fight for crumbs. Yeah, It's a crazy world to be in. And I think that convenience... Our want for convenience has stopped us thinking about the bigger picture. And it's kind of like short-term pain for long-term gain. And we've given up short-term pain with convenience and we've got long-term pain now. Yeah, definitely. I agree. It's kind of crazy. And if we could undo, like all of us have been culpable for creating these monsters. These like Yeah, we're our own, our own worst enemy because even like now, if you want something same day, shops don't sell anything because all those shops are closed down. You've got to go on Amazon. You know? Yeah, yeah. Like if you want to buy a real niche item, there's not a niche shop anymore. Amazon. You know? Mad, yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, if you taken over. If you want to start up an online store, you don't even need a website, just Amazon. Yeah. But they I take too much percentage now, so no one's making any money. It's all getting fed to the top. Same as you're paying with card, so that goes to the banks. You're paying Amazon, so that goes to Amazon. 
Back in the day, there used to be reason, relatively low Amazon fees. And then once they got a monopoly, they made it so all the sellers work for them now. Yeah. It's that same day delivery which killed it, really. It's a bit like that Nestle milk thing. It's back in the day. I can't remember the exact story. Maybe we can get like a little clip or something up. But Nestle were giving away free milk to women in a third world part of the world. Oh, the formula world. milk. Yeah, formula. for babies. Yeah. And then when they stopped lactating, they um, were stopped giving the milk out and they were charging. I don't know if it was methodically done in that way or they weren't thinking about what it would do giving away formula milk. But anyway, they stopped a lot of women lactating and they were unable to feed their kids. And I think back in the mid 90s, everyone fact checked this as well. But um, everyone had st- well, a lot of people had started boycotting Nestle. Do you remember that? Yeah. And what happened is these women where they were buying the formula because they were told it's better. Like you're not giving your good baby a good chance if you breastfeed. You need formula milk. And then when the formula milk was so expensive, these women are watering it down. But the thing is, you can't water down formula milk. It's got to be the exact ratio because of like the vitamins and nutrients and all that stuff, the like, equilibrium of it all. Right. So then kids were dying because they weren't getting fed proper ratio. It's, it's unaffordable. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So convenience ended up messing them up, you know? Yeah. Well, actually, there's just convenience and necessity because they needed it, didn't they? Yeah. So it's even worse. Oh, like... yeah, because you stop bre- you can't lactate anymore if you don't do it from the start. Yeah. Mad, isn't it? These things are crazy. Like, some of the things these companies have done are mad. Like, I saw um, uh, Shell in Nigeria was drilling, and they were hiring people to kill protesters who wouldn't get paid enough or yeah. who were complaining about all the pollution. And they get away with it. It's crazy. It's mad, man. I think that's what um, Avatar is based on, actually. Yeah. You know, that, the whole Shell incident in Nigeria. It's crazy. They flooded, their, they, they polluted all the waterways, just that, and the other people protesting. So they hired, like, a gorilla to kill them, like, gorilla armies. It's crazy. Did they? Yeah. What, Shell hired? Yeah, Shell, yeah. Did they really? Yeah. Even in, um, I think it's Mexico, where they had a Coca-Cola factory, they were hiring people to kill the protesters and union workers. So people tried to join unions for better pay, and they'd get like a paramilitary to go kill them. Crazy, it's mad. man. It's cra- These corporations got crazy power. Mad, mad. I wonder if Jeff Bezos has ordered any hits. <laughs> it wouldn't even surprise me. They got so much power. If you, if you had to say yes or no, nah, he seems a bit too square. He's not gone to third world countries, but if he did, then yeah, probably. So you can't get away with that stuff on your own soil. It's like a foreign thing, isn't it? Okay, so people would have probably lost their lives because of orders, like, and, and I'm not talking about lost their lives because of like a resource has dropped. Like he could, he, people, when you get to that powerful, not even intentionally or unintentionally, just because there's so many people. You you could order something and like it could turn into a big dispute down at the bottom. You know what I mean? Yeah, there'll be like some indirect uh, manslaughter charge. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like he's expanded so much on Amazon. These bookshops gone out of uh, you know business and someone's killed himself. Yeah, like, that sort of thing. It's possible. Oh yeah, yeah. I bet there's there'll be that. loads of suicides related to it. Like Amazon taking over. There's a bit in the wire where fruit his shops down and Marlo says like I remember when I ran a shop and my numbers are down. I sure as hell did something about it. And then Fruit has to go down. And he didn't tell him to do anything. And Fruit obviously goes and sorts it out. And I bet like he said shit to the stuff and it's ended up being like a huge dispute. I wonder yeah. what the craziest like ripple effects of what a sensible manager said to how like crazy the violence has got at the bottom, you know? Yeah. I think I remember reading something in the big short or not reading, but listening. Um, I think in a recession, every like 1% drop in GDP results in like 10,000 suicides or something. Does it really? Yeah, it's crazy. Like the amount of suicides you get in a recession are mental. Why do you reckon that is? Do you reckon that's because people... Why do you reckon people are killing themselves because of a recession? Just people get stressed out. You know, people aren't good at handling stress and they don't have a solution to just kill themselves. Like, what can I do? I'll kill myself. So it's, it's actually interesting, isn't it? Because the, the suicide isn't because of famine. They're not there yeah. like starving as a kid might in Africa. They're, star- they're starving just from... No, they're sorry, they're just dead from stress. And when you try to break it down that way and you think like what am I so stressed about right now? I'm stressed about money. Okay, so what does that mean for me? Does it mean I won't eat tonight? No, I will still eat. Does it mean I won't sleep with a roof over my head tonight? Yeah. Yes, I will still sleep with a roof over my head. Okay, so what you have to be stressed about, you could safely say is still insignificant compared to the person who's fighting for his life over at this part of the world. Yes. Yeah. So in a way you could say, and this is no disrespect to people who have taken a final solution to a temporary problem, is you could say that you killed yourself in a situation where someone would have killed to have been in your situation, which you thought it wasn't worth living. And when you think that way, this is, again, no disrespect to people who are struggling with mental health. I'm just saying that if you think that way, it can make you appreciate just how good your situation actually is. Yeah, that's literally the way I always thought. Like when I was, I don't know, oh, I'm sad about this. Like, oh, be grateful you got food. Like That's what my dad would say to me. Like, the press is people in other parts of the world without food and a roof overhead. You got both. So you got no reason. You can't, no excuses, you know? And it makes sense. 
Yeah, we. And that's what I always grew up to after. Like, I can't be depressed. 100%. I'm eating food. I'm sleeping. I got a bed. I got some money. Like, we're good. What more do you need, man? You don't have an excuse. Like, I think depression is like a privileged person's disease. Like, you have oh. to be privileged to be depressed, literally. And I'll get slaughtered for saying that. Like, people have had a go at me. You don't understand. You've never had it. Like, nah, I felt like what could be depression, but I've just told myself, give us a slap. You know, like, what are you depressed about? You have food. You're alive. You're breathing. I've been depressed before when I didn't understand life properly. Yeah. And it was when I I felt that life was the pursuit of happiness, you know? Like, why aren't I happy? Why aren't I happy? And once I gave up on that and just realized that life is a struggle and it's our job to do the best job. Not even a we... struggle. Call it a journey. Ah, I but think yeah. it's a struggle. It's a test, isn't it? It's a struggle. It's a yeah. test. Like, you're going to have ups and downs. And I guess what I'm saying is you can have people die. You can have, like, bad things happen. And if you understand that it's all a test, you can even enjoy the most traumatic, yeah. stressful struggling times you know I mean, that might be a journey in, in a way but i'm still like i'm saying people can die in your life and you can still look to find the good in that struggle yeah i'm only saying struggle not the right word because it seems like quite monotonic like it's only a struggle but like there's good moments and bad moments that's why i said journey you know yeah yeah but i love the gym and you're pushing yeah. out sets is a struggle right yeah for sure struggle is yeah. just when something's tough yeah and if your life isn't tough you're doing it wrong and I think that my view of depression came from when I was sat there festering on why I'm not happy, why this. But when I've actually had the most stress in my life, but I've been actively like, have, I've been up against the fire, you know, business is going crazy or I've got no money or I'm 300 grand in a hole. Those are the times where I have a lot to be depressed about, but I'm not depressed because there's so much to be getting on with. Depression comes from entitlement and the ability to sit and do nothing. Do you think that the kid who needs to go and get water today, needs to walk three miles to get water. They don't have time to sit around like, I'm depressed. Because you literally action die. prevails. Yeah, you literally die if you sit there depressed. It's, it's only the time when action doesn't prevail, you can get depressed. Yeah, there's people over here like, I can't get out of bed, I'm depressed. Like, well, you got that luxury. That's a luxury for you to be able to stay in bed and say you're depressed. Yeah, yeah. You know? And like the struggle is beautiful. Isn't it? Have you ever had a problem at work and you're like, ah, oh, my business is going to close and then you fix it and you're like, that was so cool how we got through that. It's the you know? best times, man. It's the same reason why I put in the group with these podcasts. It's like we celebrate the mini wins and people go, that's cringy. You're celebrating that you got 50 <laughs> subs or 75 is no, because one day we'll be looking back at how magical that was. Yeah. And bro, that same thing is this. We were at this shisha bar the other week. We drove to Cardiff, me and Shiz. And as I pulled up, I hadn't curved my Lamborghini. I had, I'd been good for ages. And in the last month, I've curved both wheels. And I'm pulling up and for a second, I curbed it. We go in and I'm smoking the shisha and I'm feeling like my day's ruined. And I'm thinking, oh, what a dumb ass mistake to make. And I thought, there's people who would kill to have my Lamborghini with no wheels on it. Yeah, and I'm yeah. there like, ah, oh, I've scratched the wheel. Like, shut yes, up, you, you bitch. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's perfect to be stressed out and get your day ruined over little things. And then you just realize that it's nice that I can stress about having a curbed Lamborghini wheel. Move on, enjoy my life. Yeah. Yeah, like, any car, in fact. Yeah, you know, any car. It doesn't even have to be a Lambo. Any car. Do you know that like you're privileged to be driving? And like I said at the start of this conversation, you could bring it back. So look, you're going bankrupt. Okay, what does that mean? Do you eat tonight? Yeah. Do you have a roof? Yeah. Do you have a bed? Yeah. Okay, you're better off than 90% of the other people in this world. Okay, yeah. so already you have no reason to stress. You could say about anything. You lose your legs? Fine. There's people who have no arms and no legs. You lose your arms and legs? Fine. There's people who can't even talk. You can always think, I'm so lucky to be here because I would hate to be here. You know, and, and it's not to shun the person who's there. It's to make you grateful for what you have, you know? And yeah. I think that everyone looks, I had all this and now I don't, bruh. <laughs> but what do you have? My granddad, when he was rough, man, he was like on the cusp of going. And my granddad did well. He had a lot of money. And I know for a fact that when he was on his deathbed, he would have given away everything for it. But yeah. then you'll get same people depressed because they lost what he had. Well, so yeah. you're saying, and we'd all be in agreement that if you were on your deathbed, you'd give away all your belongings to stay alive. Yes. But if you lose all your belongings, you would kill yourself? That doesn't even make sense. Yeah, it doesn't make sense, yeah. There's people in the ground who'd give anything. They'd give up everything for another day on earth, you know? Yeah. So you wasting it, crying about being depressed is pathetic. I don't know. Oh, yeah. People get real onto me about saying anything about depression, you know? Like, I've always had the same thing on it. Like, it doesn't exist. It's in your mind. You've made it up. You've been told this is a condition... But I can speak. It. I can speak on the opposite side of the fence for that, though, because I'm someone yeah. who's believed in depression. It's almost offensive being told <laughs> by the, that it doesn't exist yeah. when you believe. And also, like you'll have significant figures in your life who are, who are depressed, and those figures you believe have all the answers to life that you don't. So when you're told by someone that you don't believe has all the answers because he's your peer, and then someone who you feel has more life experience tells you depression exists, very hard to not believe it. Sorry, I was just laughing then because I think that when we say stuff about people, there's people who 
take the shoe and thinks it fits them, you know? It might not even be about them, but people hear it and be like, oh, they're talking about me. When, okay, so I was saying, I'm, this isn't about anyone specific. That's about general people. And, and I say this because even in my work, I could talk about mental illness. And I have my own opinions about mental illness and it can upset people at my work when I talk about it. But it's not because they're wrong or I'm right. I just have a view and, and it's not about specifics. I think most people believe in depression the way that I just said. Yeah, yeah, they do. And, and it's proper taboo to talk about it like the way I do. Because yeah. everyone, whenever I've said, oh, you don't know, you haven't been depressed, blah, blah, blah. Like, well, no, that's because you believe in it. I don't believe in it. I never have. Well, so you know? I'm sure you felt depressed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I felt it, but I didn't call it depressed, you know? Yeah. I'm just feeling a bit sad. I'm feeling a bit down. But my life carried on. I had to get up. I couldn't just sit there and stay in bed all day, you know? Yeah. But the fact that I didn't label it depressed, I didn't have the excuse to sit in bed all day saying, I'm depressed. No one could say anything to me about getting out of bed because that's what the problem you have now. You tell someone, get up and go to work. I'm depressed. And even now, like at work, oh, sorry sorry we can't bother you or press you to come into work because you're depressed we'll get in trouble for it you know it's a bad way to be and do you know what depression is the most individualistic like disease where because no one can confirm or deny its existence yeah. and i can't confirm or deny i was actually i'm going to talk about this, this super interesting thing after this because it links in is no one can confirm or deny the existence of it. And also no one can confirm or deny whether or not yours is worse than mine. So if I say I'm depressed or I say, ah, trust me, we all get down. And you say, nah, nah, James, trust me, I've got depression, mine's worse. I can't say that it's not. And therefore you can say that I'm insensitive and therefore it's easy, but we never know. Yeah. yeah. And I think that everyone wants to think they're special because this pain is so hard in your head. But could it be possible that every single person experiences that same pain, but that person can just put on a braver face than you. Is that possible? And if that's possible, then maybe we all experience it. But what happens is when some people get themselves into a dark place, they think that that is exclusive to them. And they think that I have an illness. Whereas the other person's just like, oh, I'm feeling down today. I best go on a run. I best get in the sun. I best action that problem that I'm thinking a lot about. Yeah, yeah. And like what you just said then, I think it's like, I think it's a partial lack of accountability thing. Because if someone's telling you you're not doing well enough or you need to get out of bed or stop wasting your day or this, that, and the other, you could be like, I'm depressed. And you can't say anything about it. It's like a cancelling gaslight effect, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, you can't say anything to me now. I'm depressed. Yeah. I'm instantly right. And then that enables that person to be even more lazy because they couldn't say anything to me because I'm depressed. I have to be really entitled when I'm depressed and no one can tell me what to do. It you know? actually makes people quite... Like, it makes them weaker. And it makes people not want to approach the guys depressed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and this is good because me and you are talking because I've had the opposite uh view on it and you said you've been there and that was like a label you had for like a couple of years right yeah because i remember once walking into here i was like oh, how you been you're like i'm depressed i was like uh and i know you tried other things you tried different methods and stuff you've taken the and you talked about the antidepressants right before, yeah, I took antidepressants. Last EP, yeah well not last EP, but i know you talked about it but anyway i remember coming in here once and you sat there and i was like uh looked into religion like you know like as an alternative way and like if you think positive your mind will start producing the right chemicals for you to be more happy and stuff like that yeah. But doctors don't ever prescribe that. Bro, you know? how mad is this? I went to the doctors. I was like 25. My business had been making a load of money. It was now not making any money. I felt suicidal, honestly. I was confused. Didn't really know. Um, I wasn't really happy. I feeling down. My company's losing money out of the ass. I thought I was going to lose everything that I'd managed to accumulate in my early 20s. And it was all like hitting a wall. I was taking a lot of drugs. And I went, I go to the doctors and I'm like, I'm feeling depressed. They, I said I was feeling suicidal. They gave me antidepressants. And then I came out like two weeks later. I was like, yo, these antidepressants make me feel worse. And they're like, nah, nah, that's right. They're going to make you worse before they make you feel better. Anyway, I threw them in the bin. I didn't keep, <laughs> I didn't do them for more than a month. And I thought like, that's nasty. But I thought, what kind of scumbags are going to give you a pill that makes you, you told them you feel suicidal and they're going to give you things. And then you go and you say, look, I'm feeling worse. And they say, nah, 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 that's how it's meant to be. You're meant to feel more suicidal. Bruh, if pills are going to make you feel more suicidal before they make you get better, I think that that's a, yeah. I'm, not a, I'm not a chemist and I'm not a pharmacist, so I'm not giving advice. I'm saying for me personally, I don't want to be taking a tablet that makes me want to kill myself more before it makes me not. And, and just, by the way, be, the, the thing that people need to be doing is need to be exercising. They need to be yeah. on a mission. They need to be in purpose. They need to be understanding that life is hard for everyone. Just doing something, carry on with your life like it's normal. You know? It's all a programming fix because once you fix depression, you'll never get depressed again. But all you're doing when you take tablets is it's like you're putting a band-aid over the wound, but that's with the asterisks because it's not even a band-aid. We don't know if it makes you go fucking crazy. The fact that the tablet says side effects, suicidal thoughts, and if, like how does that outweigh the risk, you know, of just not having something extra chemical in your body? It's crazy, man. It's crazy. If and the important thing I'll say about my um when I when I was depressed when I was younger, and there's this is a very 
important trait, I think, when I see some people who say mental health now, is even when I had that, I was still a complete dog. I was just like, why aren't I happy? So I was like, do am I depressed? But I still work like an absolute dog. I've always been that way. I think you get a lot of people who are lean onto mental health and it means that they don't have to turn up to nine to five. Oh, yeah, yeah at least always... you're working. Yeah, at least Honestly, you're working hard like normal. You had a mission yeah. still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably made it better for you, you know? Yeah. Because like I said, the level you're at where you felt like in and out of depression, like if you didn't do that, you'd be even worse, you know? Imagine you're moping at home. Well, I think what happened no money is in that. I was like, I was always a bit like, I don't know, saw negative in life or whatever when I was younger. And as I got older, I always thought the magic pill would get rich. And then I made a million pound after everything and I'm 23 and I was literally nowhere happier. And then by 25, even that is starting to go down and I'm losing money each year. So I'm not even making money anymore. And I was just thinking like, what is this life? And then I found, yeah, found purpose. I found purpose by like 27, but it was re-understanding how to view the world versus taking a tablet. Like I look at the world very differently, you know. Before I found religion, I used to look at the world as like a simulation. I thought each day I'm approaching this game and I'm playing the game of life like it's Monopoly. And sometimes you get good levels and sometimes you get hard levels, but you just, if you die on Mario, you start again, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I just didn't, every day is like you restart on Mario. And if it's the, unless it's the one where it's your final life and you fall down into Bowser and you never come back out, then life's good and you keep fighting. And that's how I viewed it. And then, I realized after a while that every good thing I did would come back to me in blessings. And that's when I started believing in God by like 30. But the point of what I'm saying is just purpose and understanding that life is the challenge. Life is the fun. The struggle is a challenge. Every day is a challenge. And then you never get down again. Like even you'll actually smile with the shit times because you think, oh, this is going to be fun when I turn this around. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's half the fun, isn't it? Turning stuff around. Yeah, man. And going back to tablets, if you're going to take anything... It should be natural, like psilocybin. Like that's actually something proven to help mental health, not mental health, but like uh, depression over a long period of time. If you believe in it, what's your experience you know? with it? Yeah, good, good. What are you? Completely changed the way I thought. It's mad, isn't it? Yeah, it's like a, having like a therapist in your head. Yeah, or like you understand why you think the way you think. It's mad. It's crazy, man. Because it's suddenly crazy. it changes your life. It's mad. It, it takes you out of like this self-obsessed little world and it makes you understand why other people view this. You even understand why some people might hate you. Like you might have someone like, why does that jackass hate me over that? That even makes sense. And you start to uh, like, and you start to see other people's insecurities and their flaws. It's, cra- it's actually crazy. And I, I thought half my theory is why so many people in this country are depressed is because it grows in fields, right? Yeah. And if we live like how we used to live, we'd be eating small doses of that every day in our diet because it's not toxic. Yeah. You know, and those little doses, like microdosing, is proven to like help depression, anxiety, all these things. Yeah. So like, if you're still eating that stuff, but now we eat crap out of packets, you know, like plastic stuff. Yeah, you was... like it's taken out of our diet almost. You know. Yeah, you were saying like in the east, you get no people really getting cancer, do you? Not like you mm. do here, and they still got like heavy smokers. Even some of the places where they live, here's interesting, right? So you got everyone saying that veganism or whatever is the reason why you don't live as long some of the places where they live the longest they smoke and eat red meat yeah so we really don't know much what we do is we try to take studies that aren't lab studies because there's so many variables in them and you try to say that ah, okay these red meat eaters they get more cancer but hang on are they getting more cancer because if you're a red meat uh, meat eater you're also more likely to smoke cigars you're also more likely to drink whiskey because you're also likely to do a load of these other vices well, yeah, so, if you could afford to eat red meat every day, you know, you got money. So you're probably going to smoke cigars, this, that, and you ever have another unhealthy lifestyle. Like, you're going to do more unhealthy things because you have money, you know? Yeah. And then you go to the Inuit and they're eating red meat, but they're not doing any of that stuff. So they live for ages. Yeah. How crazy is it? What I was telling you about the Inuit is there was a lady who's married to this guy, Glenn Villeneuve or something. That He was on Joe Rogan. He's a guy who lives out in Alaska and he married some lady who's a native to where he's like found his home and all of her brothers have died on the ice cut a hole Crazy, in the ice hard life they fish through the ice and like one of the brothers died and then the next brother dies nice. and another brother dies and they almost accept that that's just their fate and and you know you say about life struggle and enjoying it like i wouldn't want to do that <laughs> no i don't want that sort of struggle like i like this struggle where we got like a bit of comfort in between but living on the ice and cutting holes in the ice that's not for me freezing 24 7 but again they probably don't feel depressed because all we're concentrating on is surviving you know and the other mad thing about Inuits as well, they don't eat any vegetables, do they? They don't need to eat vegetables at all. So like this whole thing's a myth. I had a conversation last night about this same stuff. And this, this here, I'm not making this like a religious podcast, right, bro? But I just think this is crazy. How yeah. crazy is this? So if you eat an animal head to toe, you have all of the nutrition you need to not need anything else. You get everything you would get from vegetables. You, don't, you won't get scurvy, nothing. 
Now, if you just ate the gluttonous parts of the animal, the stuff that you can eat and you don't have to have a strong stomach The best for, tasting you know, parts, basically. I'll take the breast and the wing. You'll get scurvy and you'll die. So God has set it up so that if you want to take this poor animal's life, you best eat the whole thing. Otherwise, you're going to be devoid of the yeah. nutrition that you need. Tell yeah, me that mad. that is not Yeah, so the top perfect, tail, you've got to eat everything in you. Eyes, nose, testicles, whatever. Eyeballs, lips, cheeks. Whatever. And if you don't animal, eat it, yeah, you're, you're going to be... All the nutrition. And you die. Yeah. So it's made... So yeah, you're not going to waste the heart of the animal I created. Yeah. So I saw a mad thing. There's a guy who's shipwrecked. Yeah, and he's just floating on a bit of wood. And fish have started coming onto the wood now as it's like getting algae on it. Yeah. And he's managed to catch some fish. And he's eating like the nice bits yeah. as normal as you would. Yeah. And then suddenly he's got a craving and he just gets eyeballs, starts eating the eyeballs and they're delicious. But that's because he had a like vitamin A deficiency from being out at sea for so long, you know? Yeah. And he's craving all the different bits and he ate the whole fish. Have you ever had it when you've but just craved But for the first time protein? he didn't eat everything. He just ate just the meaty bits, you know? That's mad, isn't it? I think the yeah. human body literally craves the shit. Yeah, you needs. know, you know, your body knows what you need, you know? And it knows where to get it from. Like, even if you never got taught these vitamins in the eyeballs, if your body's lacking it, you'll know to get it from there. It's crazy, like... Yeah, yeah. It's like when people are hungover, like they crave yeah. bad food. Yeah, it's like ingrained in you. Like, this is what I want. Crazy, like, isn't it? When you're ill, you crave, like, sugar and... Yeah. And have you ever had it where you've been eating crap for ages and you just crave a steak? And then when you eat it, it's just like... Or it's some, it's like protein. Quite often, if I've just been eating pizza, like, when I'm away in Holland or something, I'll just eat, like, pizza. Yeah. And then when I get a steak or I finally get to somewhere I can have one, I'm like, wow, this is insane, man. Yeah, it's mad because you get that craving even when you don't know what the content is of that food. Like when you're younger, you know, you don't know what proteins in this food. that. But if you've been eating this shit for one week, you need that, you know? All right, then why do you reckon mad. pregnant women like crave coal and shit like that? Coal? Well, like charcoal? Like anything. They yeah, crave yeah, yeah. random I'm, shit. Yeah, yeah I need someone who used to eat, pick at a wall and eat the powder out of a wall. What do you reckon? What do, you reckon? do you reckon there's something in that? That she needs. It must be, yeah. I don't, it's mad, Do you reckon it? it's that smart then, or is that just some miswiring, like a program issue? I don't know. I think their hormones are all over the place, but yeah, there must be some sort of craving because they crave like chocolate, all different things. You know, it depends on what you're short of. Yeah, yeah. But when they when they want to do weird shit like eat walls and stuff, that's just weird. <laughs> that's that just like mismatch. Mad man. Right. Well, checking out for the episode. Shiz, you want to plug your socials? Yeah, Shiz GZ. James Lake Show. Make sure you comment on the video. Thumbs up the video as well. Subscribe to the channel, guys, because we yeah, got we a lot need of viewers. Subs. We need subs. Yeah, we get like 500 <laughs> viewers an episode, but there's no subs. So that should be 500 subs minimum. It takes two seconds to sign up to a Gmail account. Do it, guys. Uh, over and out.